Well, it's good to be with you today in worship with you. And as always, I pray that you are excited uh, and anticipating, anticipating encountering God in a very intimate way. I know that's what his desire, uh, wanting to be with us, wanting to connect with us. So I pray that we would just open up our hearts, open up our minds and allow God to connect with us. Before we do that, or I should say, before we kind of get into the teaching, we're going to spend a few moments uh, singing. So if you would, let's just prepare our hearts for that and then we'll jump into the teaching as we are in this series called Decoding Decisions.
What one word would you pick that at the end of your life, that word would have described your life here on earth? Does that make sense? What word, what one word would you pick that if you achieved that word and your life was about that word, what would that be? Uh, would it be success? Would it be popularity? Would it be happiness? Would it be achievements? You know, when people at the end of your life, you go from this world to the next, and people, your family, loved ones, stand around, they remember your life, or they're, they're, celebrating the end, they're celebrating your life, the celebration of life. What one word would they say, this was them, this was her, this was, this was him? What word would they use? Because you accomplished that. What word would you pick? Because there's one, that's what we're going to talk about today, because there's one word that, that in God's eyes is above and beyond all words. Success, happiness, uh, influential, um, popularity, all those words. There's one word, I think, that in God's eyes, it trumps all of those words. And if this word could, would characterize how we lived our lives, I think it would be absolutely not just amazing, but we've, we, we did it right. Because if you think about it, do you know that one story that Jesus talks about in, this, in the uh, Bible where he says, well done, my good and what servant? You know, did he say, well done, my good and successful, or well done, my good and happy, well done, my good and wealthy? What That one word he used is, well done, my good and faithful servant. That's that word, faithful. And that's what we're going to talk about. That one word, because that one word is huge. So we're in this series called um, Decoding Decisions. And as, as I've been sharing with you, this series is built upon being predetermined so that each week, whatever we're talking about, whether it being consistent, whether it being having a plan, being ready, you know, for temptation, whether, uh, you know, we're, whatever that's going to, whatever that word is, or I'm sorry, whatever that is, we're going to be predetermined to accomplish it. So therefore, you know, back here, we're, we're predetermined that we're going to live our lives. And let's take for you know this week, we're, we're going to be predetermined that we're going to be faithful. So that means in the future, when we're hit with decisions, instead of making the wrong decisions, because at times, let's be very honest, we, we can be poor decision makers because we want to pursue what we want. And we believe that if we can accomplish our desires, it's going to fulfill us. But at the end of the day, it doesn't. It leaves us empty because... It's not what God wants for us. And so if we are predetermined that we're going to, uh, you know, in this situation, be faithful, then when we get hit with these choices that might take us or derail us from being faithful, we've already made the decision. We have already made the decision. You know, and, and again, it's very easy to get off course, isn't it? It's extremely easy. We can say, yes, I'm going to be faithful, but then we get hit with those decisions. Sometimes it's, it, it's very difficult, and it's very difficult to, you know, to stay, you know, to, to even to be predetermined. It, it, the tr we can just get off point. We can get off point. But in order to be faithful, to do right, it's not going to come easy, right? To be faithful and to make the right decisions, it's going to cost us at times. It's going to cost us, in a sense, because when I say that, because, again, there's things that we want, and it becomes difficult, and it can be very hard to stay on that path, to, you know, to, to stay predetermined. But it's, it, it can come with a great cost. I want to share with you, uh, many of you may know, or you may not know, but um, Scott Earle, one of our elders here at Element, passed away at... Um, uh, the late hours of Sunday evening. His wife went down, uh, he was down in the basement working out, and uh, he didn't come upstairs uh, for the longest time, so she went down to see if everything, you know, what was going on, if everything was okay, and she went down and she found him unresponsive. She tried to resuscitate him, but to no luck. And so I just want to say this, I have been absolutely distraught over this one. <laughs> I've been in the ministry since 95. 
And I have journeyed with a lot of people. I'm a very relational individual. I'm very relational. And I've journeyed with a lot of people. I've been through a lot of grief with people. I've been through tragedies with people. I've hurt with them. I've cried with them. But I can honestly say that this one got me. Scott was an incredible guy. Scott was an incredible guy. And he had only him and Jennifer had only been coming here to Element since 2019. But in that short time, I got very close with Scott. I had a really good relationship with him. He was an elder here. He helped with the high school students on Sundays. He was also very instrumental in our men's group called the Dudes Group that I started back right before COVID. He was one of the OGs, if I could say that. He was only 59 years old. But the thing that I loved about Scott was we were doing life together. So if I get emotional, <laughs> I'd ask you to give me a little bit of grace because this one got me. This one was a hard one. And as I was thinking about it, you know, looking at what we were going to talk about today, the teaching for today, I couldn't think of a different, a, another topic where it just illustrated, or illustrated Scott's life so much. That word faithful. Because that's who Scott was. He was faithful. And so today I'm not looking to glorify Scott or elevate Scott, but I'm here to say Scott embodied this message. Scott embodied the points that I'm going to share with you today, talking about being faithful, being predetermined to be faithful. When you, look at, when you looked at Scott's life, he walked the faith. He lived it out. He embodied these things that we're going to talk about today. In Habakkuk uh, chapter 2, verse 4, it says this, Look at the proud. They trust in themselves, and their lives are crooked but the righteous will live by their faithfulness to God. And it, so it says, look at the proud. They trust in themselves. They trust in their skill sets. They trust in their intellect. They trust in their talents. They trust in what they can do. They trust in their human strengths. They trust in themselves. And consequently, because of that, their lives are off. They're crooked. They're empty. But the ones who are righteous, the Scott Earls, they will live their life by their faithfulness to God. Now, what does it mean to be faithful? Let's answer that question. That's the, you know, the, the body of this message. What does it mean to be faithful? Because if we're called to be faithful, and, and that's, what the, you know, that's what the righteous do, they live by their faithfulness to God, what does that mean? What does it mean to be faithful? I think you can look at how to live that out. I think you can look uh, because it, 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 Jesus is teaching, obviously, because I think he taught and embodied what it meant to be faithful. And the three things that I think that we can see from the way he ministered and the way he uh, lived out faithfulness and communicated and taught on faithfulness, three things I think we can look at is this. The way he valued people, the way we value people. Being faithful is the way we value people. The way we multiply God's resources that he has given us. And number three, we respond to the promptings of God. And when, again, when I look at the life of Scott Earl, that is exactly what he did. He touched, I don't know how many people. That's why I am so, that's why I am so shaken up. He was a high school AP English teacher, and he touched many, many, many students' lives, having a significant impact upon them. I remember one time we were up north at a guy at our dudes retreat, and we were out in this, this, uh, this. Uh, I forget the name of it. The pine. Uh, I forget the name of it. But we were. There was a. There was this. Had trails and things in it. And him and I were just connecting. That's what he did. He just. He would connect with you emotionally. He would just. He would just connect with you. And each guy in our group, somehow, some way, he would find a way to just kind of connect with you or with them, just one on one, and just talk. Just talk. Just do life. 
Get to know you. One time we were there, we were walking around, and, and one of the things I appreciated about Scott so much is the way he taught. The way he taught his class, his classes. He didn't care so much about how you arrived to the point. He just wanted to understand what your thinking was and if you understood the topic at hand. That's how he taught. And for me, I appreciated that so much because that's how he, that's not only how he conducted his life or his teaching, but that's also how he engaged in his relationships. He was just an incredible person. He valued people. He made you feel valued. He leaned into you. Anywhere, you know, and I think Scott was just that guy. Anywhere he went, wherever he was at, he also coached uh, cross country at Bedford. He, you know, he, he, anywhere, he, anywhere he was at, he would bring value to people. It didn't matter where you were at. It didn't matter who you were. He would find an opportunity somehow, some way, in his way, he would add value to you, to you. He was always consistent with it. And that's the thing. It's not going to happen with just good intentions. It's not, that, that's not going to happen. The only way it's going to happen is if it is a true value of yours and you're consistent with it. So to value someone else, you're consistent with it. It's who you are. It's a value of yours. It's you. It's who you are. You're consistent. It's not going to happen by chance. And a lot of times, it, the reason why that we're not consistent and that we, it, you know, it, it, it ha, it's, it, it's not going to take place within our lives because we become focused on ourselves. I heard, I heard someone use this illustration. I thought it was awesome. And, he, and they said, I can prove to you that we all focus on ourselves. They said, bring a picture up, bring an image up, bring a picture up of a group that you're in. Uh, you know, it could be, you know, you know, six or seven or so people, but a picture that you're in, uh, you know, with a handful of people, and who is the first person you look at? It's usually you. you, you just, and I heard that, and I thought, that is so true. We're, it's so easy to become focused on self. And when we become focused on self, it's hard to value other people because we're not consistent. And it's not going to happen by chance. We have to be intentional with it. We have to be intentional with it. Listen to what Paul says in Ephesians 4, verse 29. He says this, Don't let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths, but only what is helpful for what? For building others up according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. That's being consistent. That's being intentional. That's saying, I'm going to use my words. I'm not going to use words that's going to hurt people or tear people down. I'm only going to use words that's going to build them up, that's going to encourage them, that's going to lift them up. When I walk into a room, people are going to want to gravitate towards me because, I want to be, because I'm going to be an encourager. I'm going to lift them up. I'm going to value them. I'm going to, I'm going to uh, make them feel better after they talk to me, right? You know, they're going to leave feeling better. But it's going to have to, it happens with consistency and intentionality. I think it's exactly what Jesus said. Think about the, think about the relationships that Jesus was, was in. And think about the, some, of the, some of the situations that took place and how he conducted himself, how he engaged, how he brought value to them. Think about the disciples when they were worried. Did he say, hey, you know what? Could you guys just pick yourself up by your bootstraps? Can you just stop worrying? It's getting old, okay? I'm tired of it. It's bringing me down. That's not what he said. He said, look, don't worry about what you eat and drink. Don't worry about those things. You know, as, as we talked last week, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things that you're thinking about will be added to you or be given to you. I, I mean, to me, that's encouraging. That's bringing value. That's not condemning. How about the woman, uh, the woman that was brought by, the, you know, by the, uh, the leaders of that time, the Pharisees or whatever, and they caught her in adultery, and they brought her and they, they threw her down in front of Jesus? What did Jesus do, if you remember that story? She was caught in adultery. She was guilty. You are a sinner. You deserve hell. You need to repent. It's not what he said. He said he didn't bring shame to her or anything. He said, you know what? The one without sin, throw the first stone. And they all left. They all left. And he asked the woman again. He didn't condemn her. He said, 
where are your accusers? And she said, they're not here. And he said, you know, I don't condemn you either. Go and sin no more. The love, the value. How about when Peter denied him? He didn't say, you know what, dude, you broke trust. You broke trust. I'm done with it. When I needed you the most, you broke trust. I'm done with you, Peter. That's not what he said. He came back to him and he loved him. He asked him, you know, do you love me, Peter? Yes, I do. Three times, three different types of love. Jesus said, feed my sheep. So, I, you know, when you look at the life of Jesus, someone that was pure, someone that had not sinned, he could have definitely condemned. He could have definitely brought shame. But instead, in every time, he brought value. It didn't, he didn't condone sinfulness. But the thing of it is, love is what motivates, not guilt and shame. Love is what motivates and that's exactly what, every interaction, every opportunity he had, he loved. He built people up. He added value to individuals. So the first one that we talk about, about being faithful, is bringing value to people. Treating people with value. The second one that we're talking about, that, that bringing, uh, uh, in defining faithfulness, is, is using all of our God-given resources, uh, multiplying them. Right? Multiplying them. Uh, Matthew 25, we read about a guy, a, a, a business owner or whatever, went on a journey and he had some servants and he said, I need you, to, I'm going to trust you with my wealth, right? I'm going to trust you with my wealth. And one of them he gave a bag with five, whatever it was, how, however much it was. Like, five, let's say five coins, okay? Just because I, uh, I don't have the full verses in front of me. But let's say five coins, just to make it easy. The second one, he said, I want you to take this bag with two coins in it. And then the, uh, the last one, he said, I want to, uh, here's a bag with one coin in it. And he told him, he said, I want you to take this and I want you to, um, I want you to, I want you to um, invest it. Okay? So that's what they did, except for the first one. The first one with five went out and he, he invested it and he got a return on it. The second one invested it as well and he got a return on it. It was a smaller, a smaller, but he got a return on it too, meaning he didn't invest as much. The first guy risked it all. He invested all of it and he doubled his owner's wealth. The second guy uh, tried to, um, tried to, or he, he just, um, he just uh, invested a little bit of it, but he did get some, some you know, investment back. The second, the first guy, took it and he buried it because he was afraid. And listen to what Jesus said in this story. He said in Matthew 25, 21, he said, the master replied to the one, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Um, and that was kind of the, the same thing that he said to, to the first two, I should say. All right. He was faithful. He took care of what God had given him, right? Um, you know, it, it, he, he took it and he used it. It's just like you and I. What resources do we have? Whether it be time, whether it be money, whether it be um, our, our uh, giftedness that God has given us, what are we doing with those things? Do we view those things? Are we good stewards with those things? Do we see that those things are not really ours, they're God's? And all he's doing is the same thing here. He's trusting, entrusting us with it. What are we doing with the resources that God has blessed us with and is entrusting us with? Whatever it may be, what are the faithful acts that we're using, you know, using, uh, you know, doing with these resources, okay? What, what, are the, what are they doing? You know, are we, are we multiplying it? Whatever it is, whatever it is, whatever we have in my life, are we making it better? Are we multiplying it that God is allowing us to, you know, that God has entrusted us with? Whether it be our business, whether it be our time, whatever resource we have, you know, whatever we have, are we multiplying it. Listen to what he said to the last servant, though, because that's, that's, what, that's being faithful. It's taking what he has entrusted us with, and we are, we are using it for his glory. We are using it to build his kingdom, and we're, we're multiplying it, okay? But look what the first guy did. He took it, he was scared, and he buried it until his master came back. And this is what Jesus said to him. Uh, or, the man, or the guy said, I was afraid and went out and hid your gold in the ground. See, here is what belongs to you. And his master said, and this is in Matthew 25, verses 25 and 26. In the first part of 26, he says this. His master replied, you wicked, lazy servant. 
Think about it. The first two multiplied the resources that they were entrusted with, and they were called, and they were characterized as what? Faithful. The, the third guy did nothing because he was afraid, and he was not just lazy, but he was also wicked. He was also wicked. So, the first, you know, the first uh, when we define what it means to be faithful, uh, the first thing that we can that, that we can observe through Jesus's teaching and Jesus's life is this: treating people with value, adding value to people. The second one is multiplying our God-given resources that He's entrusted us with. The third and last one is this. We use every opportunity, we do everything we can, and we obey and respond to the promptings of God. Every prompting that God, that God sends our way through His Spirit, we act upon, we obey, we respond, we take action with it. it you know, uh, Acts chapter 20, verse 22 says this, And now, compelled by the Spirit, that's a prompting, prompted by the Spirit, compelled, motivated, uh, encouraged, however we want to say it, compelled by the Spirit, I'm going to Jerusalem not knowing what, what, what will happen to me there. That was Paul writing those words in Acts. Paul saying, I don't know what's going on. I don't know what's going to happen uh, because uh, they were looking for his life. They were going, you know, he didn't know if he was, uh, his life would get taken, okay? He didn't know if, if, you know, they would execute him or whatever. But he said, you know what? The Spirit is prompting me to do this and I'm going to obey the Spirit. And that's what he did. I don't have all the details. I don't have all the answers. But the one thing I do know is I'm being compelled. I'm being prompted by the Spirit to go to Jerusalem. And I don't, again, know what's going to happen, but that's where I'm going. I don't have all the, I don't have all the details, but that is what I'm going to do. That's what happens when we faithfully pursue Jesus. We become prompted by the Holy Spirit. We become prompted by the Holy Spirit. And this is the deal. We, don't, we, don't, we can't control everything. We might not be able to fix everything. Whatever it is, obedience is what is required of us. The outcome is God's. I know this is something that I really struggled with in the, in the first times of, uh, when I first got into the ministry. Because that is what, you know, the ministry is hard. Counseling is hard. Because you want to help people. You want to fix people. And it's easy to want to, you know, it's easy to get that in your head where you're, where you're wanting to fix people or, you know, um, you know, fix their situation or whatever it is. But at the end of the day, I, I can't do that. You can't do that. The only person I can fix is me. And that's only by the power of God. I'm required to just respond to the promptings of the Spirit, of, 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 the spirit of God. That's why ministry can be so hard because it's not like another job where you see the completion of your work. And because of that, it's easy to get caught up in this, how do, how do I get validated? And that's a scary place to be. Because at the end of the day, there is an audience of one and not many. Am, you know, am I being obedient? God's not asking me to do the work. He's just asking me to be faithful. He's just asking me to be obedient. Obedient is my responsibility. The outcome is all His. It's all His. So here's the deal. Are we faithful? That's what it means. Are you faithful? When God puts something on your heart, there's been times, many times, where God has put a name on my heart. And immediately, I will either call them or I'll shoot them an email. And I'll just say, hey, God put your name on my heart just wondering how you're doing and try to encourage them. I don't know what's going on. And there's many times where I've gotten a response back that says, you sent that email or you texted me at the right time because I was feeling very discouraged. And I know you've done that before too. We don't know. We don't know. But when the Spirit places something on our hearts, if we simply obey, we don't, God is in control of the outcome. It's God's. And that's what it means where we become predecided, predetermined that I'm going to be faithful. If God puts a, a, a uh, prompting on my life, I'm going to respond to that. And that is, that's, that's what it means to be, you know, as we look at being faithful, those three things, are we predetermined to do those three things? The, I think those three things will enable us to become faithful, right? We add value to people. We faithfully multiply. We multiply the, the God-given resources that He has given us for His kingdom. We're using them for His glory. And then last, we are, um, we're, we're faithful to obey the promptings of Him, of the Spirit. 
That's when we are predetermined to do those things. And, and, and which means, you know, we, we're going to be sent, we're going to have intentionality behind it. We are going to do it. We are going to make it happen. Not just talk about it. We're going to make it happen. And as I shared with you before, that's what I saw in Scott's life. I saw someone and I felt it. Every time I was in a conversation with him or whatever we were doing, I felt valued by him. He used his God-given gifts, such as teaching, to, for, he multiplied those. He absolutely multiplied those. And he was obedient to the promptings of the Spirit. I saw that time after time after time after time in his life. And I just want to close by saying this. I don't understand why his life was cut so short. I don't. But the one thing I do know is this. Through that man, through his life, God touched many, many, many lives. By Scott being faithful to God, God was able to touch me, to touch you, to touch many, many, many lives. Because Scott was faithful. He was faithful. And I know he heard those words. Well done. Well done, my good and faithful servant. Come enjoy. The righteous will live by the faith, faithfulness of God. Let me read that verse one more time from Habakkuk. Look at the proud. They trust in themselves. Is that you? I hope that's not me. I hope that when I go from this life to the next, that that's not what people, that's not what characterized my life. But instead, the righteous will live by their faithfulness to God, just like Scott. Are you predetermined? Are you predetermined? What is going to characterize your life? What word's going to characterize your life? Again, is it happiness? Is it success? Is it wealth? Is it achievements, accomplishments? Is it good times? Or is it faithfulness? And again, we have to be predetermined if that's going to happen because it's not going to happen by chance. Are you predetermined? I certainly pray and hope you are. And I pray that you have a good week. And I look forward to being with you back here next week as we continue in this series called Decoding Decisions. I searched the world But it couldn't fill me Man's empty praise Treasures that fade are never